Hi, welcome to the Personnel File, where we look into the career and personality of a Starfleet character from the Star Trek universe. I'm Rick and as usual, we will be drawing on primarily the shows for content, but using some memory beta, that is books and other outside sources, for context. This time we'll be looking into the file of Dr. Julian Subatoy Bashir from Deep Space Nine. Jules Bashir was born on August 29th, 2341 to Richard and Amsha Bashir in London, Great Britain, Earth. It became clear in school at the age of five that Bashir was struggling to keep up with other children. For this reason, his parents made the clandestine decision to take him to Agion Prime and to have him undergo accelerated critical neural pathway engineering in 2348. This was in violation of the Federation's strict genetic engineering guidelines, which state it should be only used to rectify life-endangering genetic disorders. He was enrolled in a new school to cover the changes in personality, where he started to outperform his peers as the genetic augmentations took effect. Over two weeks his IQ improved 70 points, and he received further treatments to improve his stamina and coordination. The family moved to Invernia II in 2351, following diplomat Richard Bashir's assignment. While there, they were caught up in an ionic storm, and a young girl grew ill while they were taking shelter. No one present knew how to cure her, and she died. This had a strong impact on the ten-year-old Jules, who decided to pursue a career in medicine. In 2356, he legally changed his name to Julian to reflect the distance from his former self. He also considered a career in tennis, but decided against it, instead sticking to his medical plans. 2359, he enrolled in Starfleet Medical Academy at the age of 18, and took several of the basic courses including the extension classes in engineering, specifically Starship Operations. Note that it is unclear if he attended Starfleet Academy first, then transferred for further training to Starfleet Medical, though this seems likely. He was present on Earth during the Borg incursion into Federation space when a planetary state of alert was declared. During his time at Starfleet Medical, he continued his interest in sports by becoming captain of the racquetball team and proceeded to win the Academy Championship in 2368. Later that year, he graduated as Salutatorian, second highest in his class. As a Medical Academy graduate, he was granted the rank of Lieutenant Junior Grade. In 2369, he was offered a position at a medical institute in Paris. He turned it down, instead choosing to remain in Starfleet. At 27 years old, he was able to select his own assignment and chose to be stationed on Deep Space Nine to tackle the challenges it would bring. He was transported to the Bajor Sector on the USS Cochrane. In 2370, he was the first Starfleet officer to cross over to the Terran Mirror Universe for 103 years. In 2371, he was nominated for the Federation Medical Council's Carrington Award for his work on biomolecular replication. During this year, he also completed research on T cell anomalies and immunotherapy. In 2372, he was promoted to lieutenant. Towards the end of the year, he discovered an immunization to the Teplin Blight, a disease that would quicken when exposed to electromagnetic fields such as those produced by medical equipment. He was awarded a commendation for the act, despite considering it a failure, as he was only able to protect future generations, not cure those currently afflicted. During the Klingon War of 2372 to 2373, Bashir was diverted to Agilon Prime to assist in medical triage. He was also involved in a temporal event that brought him and fellow officers back to the year 2268. While attending a medical conference on Mizan 4 in 2373, Bashir was captured and replaced by a changeling for around a month. During this time, the real Bashir was kept as a prisoner of war by the Dominion at internment camp 371. Then in 2373, he was considered as the model for the long-term medical hologram. However, the nature of his childhood augmentations came to light and jeopardised his Starfleet career. He was allowed to retain Starfleet Commission after the plea bargain with Rear Admiral Bennett, where his father would serve prison time for the act, as the young Bashir had no say in the procedures. 
When Deep Space Nine was abandoned by the Federation at the close of 2373, Bashir along with many of the senior staff transferred to the USS Defiant NX-74205 and served as Chief Medical Officer until the station was recaptured in 2374. Soon after, supposedly an Agent Sloan of some made-up Section 31 contacted him for recruitment. The United Federation of Planets does not recognise any such organisation. In 2375, he was asked to present a lecture on Romulus on the Teppan Blight, and involved in redacted, when Chairman Koval redacted with Section 31. Bashir fought in the siege of AR-558 and survived. He later discovered the cure for the Founder's morphogenic virus, which was then used as part of a peace treaty to negotiate an end to the Dominion War. Dr. Bashir is one of the few characters where we don't have much of a history to his Starfleet career, having been fresh out of training and our first episode of DS9 being his first day on the job. As such, as viewers, we are present for the majority of his growth as a character and watch as he develops over time. He originally joined Deep Space Nine as a more naive individual seeking to challenge himself with notions of frontier medicine. His high academic record and inner knowledge of his skill set, augmented or not, created a sort of romanticised view of the posting where he would be tested every day with new unexpected problems. Fortunately for the people in his care he was able to rise to the challenge, but he was nonetheless infused with a growing sense of pessimism, especially with the eruption of the Dominion War. He has always had a wry wit, but often was more optimistic in his approach to things before his experiences on Deep Space Nine. Ironically, this initial brighter, chipper attitude often rubbed people the wrong way, who found his boyishness annoying, especially when he pushed harder to make friends. This lighter side to him was eroded with time, but that isn't to say that he lost his morality. On the contrary, if anything, his harsh experiences served to hone his sense of right and wrong, which led him to never be able to commit to organisations such as Section 31, nor condone their actions. For Bashir, the ends don't always justify the means. Tales post DS9 often has Bashir flirting with entering Section 31 in various iterations while balancing his ethics and medical career, however. Looking at his career, we can see that his life was forever altered by his augmentation. Not only did it improve his capabilities, but it drove a wedge between him and his parents as he grew older and began to think that they had been ashamed of him as a child and were only proud of him now because of his gifts. He never came forward with his status as a human augment and actively avoided standing out at times to allay suspicion. It's heavily suggested that he only graduated second on purpose to avoid getting a flawless record and drawing too much attention, as he was still able to attain his choice of posting with the results he got. This could also be a reason he declined to pursue a career in sports, a field in which his genetics would have been an undeniable benefit, but a benefit that comes with a lot of limelight and, personally, he may consider himself to have an unfair advantage. Instead, he chose to place himself in a position where he can help others and make a difference, turning down a prestigious position on Earth to work the front lines of Federation space. He forms strong friendships among the crew of the station, most notably in Miles O'Brien, with whom he can indulge his hobbies of sports, holodeck battles, and let's face it, geeking out over model sets. He also was drawn to the enigmatic Garrick, which is no surprise as Bashir has always been a strong fan of mysteries and puzzles so trying to figure out Garrick was one such challenge. Soon this developed into a friendship fuelled by compassion. He also pursued multiple relationships while on Deep Space Nine, but none worked out in the long run, save Esri Dax, with whom he initially felt very awkward around considering his prior attraction to Jadzia, despite the two becoming firm friends. Julian has shown a desire to continually learn. Since leaving the Medical Academy, he has attended many talks and conferences in a variety of medical fields, and often had multiple research side projects on the go. He also continued to show an active interest in examining the works of other cultures, such as Bajoran music and Cardassian literature. This again is likely driven by an innate desire to seek out more challenges, 
for a mind capable of more than what it was often exposed to. He did have an arrogance and self-assuredness in his youth, fueled by his accomplishments, and the revelation of his augmented nature led him to be able to finally express himself in full, without holding back. While it took some time for his friends to get used to this, they stuck by him, a testament to the general goodness within him that sticks even throughout his development. Bashir shows that a superior ambition need not be a character flaw. So as usual, I'm going to point to three episodes of DS9 that show a good grounding of the character, and I'll start with The Quickening, where we get to see him faced with a real medical challenge and his more optimistic view early in the episode. Dr. Bashir, I presume, has the revelation of his genetic modifications and his background relationship with his family, as well as some opinions from his colleagues. Inter Armor Enim Silent Legas has him clash with Section 31 and the kind of struggles that forced him into a more cynical view of Starfleet while retaining his morality. Thanks for listening to this file. I have to say Bashir was probably one of my favourite characters in DS9, so I enjoyed looking into his past. There's about as much again on his future, but unfortunately it's not concrete as to if these events will be folded into canon or not. So what did you think of Bashir? I know a lot of people found his early character to be rather annoying, but his development was undeniable. Until the next video, thanks again for watching, and goodbye.